All right, everybody, we are back with Ed talking about ASP.NET Racer. Take it away, How sir. How are you guys doing? Good. Oh, go ahead, take it away, sir. Ready to go. Yep, ready All to right, go. So uh, I'm going to talk about uh, Razor today, and there are a lot of Razor things to cover. So I'm ready to go ahead and switch to uh, my, my screen here when you guys are. We're all set, sir. All right, so hello.net conf. Uh, hopefully everybody's enjoying uh, the show so far. Uh, my name's Ed Charbon. I'm a developer advocate for progress. Um, and let me get adjusted here. There we go. I'm a developer advocate for progress software, a Microsoft MVP. And today we're gonna talk about Razor into the Razorverse. Uh, Razor is an ecosystem that has expanded over the last few years and includes uh, many different Razor technologies. So we have uh, Razor, the, the engine itself, the syntax, Razor views, HTML helpers, Razor pages, Razor tag helpers, Blazor and its Razor components. So we're gonna start at the top level, but we are gonna deep dive into each one of these things. We only have a short period of time, so let's get going. Uh, the first thing that I wanna cover is the syntax itself. So Razor, the syntax is a template markup syntax based on the C-sharp programming language. Uh, the nice thing about Razor is that we don't have opening and closing tags with Razor. We use the at symbol to open up our template and it intelligently finds the end for us. So if we look at the old way of doing this in web forms, you can see it's a lot more verbose than using Razor. Um, if we look at something a little more modern like Angular, we still have this very specific Angular language that we're using uh, to define our templates in our markup, where Razor is just using C Sharp and markup. So there's some benefits to Razor here, and there's even more with the ability to do complex expressions. So we open up an at symbol, we can do all sorts of things. In this example, we're doing some math and just writing out an output um, into our HTML. We also have control structures, like for each if then statements, try catches, all of those things are valid within our C sharp syntax or Razor syntax. Um, here's an example of an if statement, and we can branch out and write out different portions of HTML to our page using Razor this way. So let's talk about Razor execution really quick. It's actually a complex thing happening behind the scenes. So Razor generates C sharp code from the template. It then compiles that code into a .NET assembly, it loads it into memory, and then executes that compiled code. So that's the Razor syntax. That's a quick overview. Let's jump into Razor views and HTML helpers next. So Razor views are a streamlined way of writing uh, code-focused templates in .NET. They're returned from a controller action as a view result, and the content is generally made up of HTML and components that are HTML helpers. Now, other component models are valid here, like tag helpers and razor components, but typically with views, you'll find HTML helpers being used. This project template comes from file new project. If we click on web application and specifically that model view controller application, we're talking about the view portion here. So razor views in that template. So that's razor views in a nutshell. We're going to talk about HTML helpers next. So HTML helpers are the component model for razor views. They're invoked as methods within HTML razor views. They encapsulate code and HTML, so we're building components using this, this structure. At the end of the day, these things turn into an HTML string, and that's really important to remember here. And we're gonna get into the reason why it's important later, but the main takeaway here is these things turn into HTML strings, so keep that in mind. So this is what an HTML helper looks like and how we use it in a Razor view. We call at HTML, and that identifies that we're invoking a helper, and then we call the method on that extension method on uh, the HTML class. Now, we pass in our parameters and output um, the type of helper that we were looking for. In this case, we're doing an action link. So we get a nice anchor tag uh, with the path that we're specifying in our HTML helper. Creating these is actually fairly simple. We just need to extend IHTML helper as an extension method and we return IHTML content. 
So let's take a look at what that looks like. If we look at the function signature, signature it's very simple. We take in iHTML helper, we output iHTML content. And we have an example here of a hello helper. We're gonna write out a span with a message inside. We're actually gonna break away here and do a quick demo and we'll view that HTML helper in Visual Studio. So let's do that. Let's break over to Visual Studio. And in this solution, I have three projects. And we're gonna start with the Razor View project. And this is identified specifically by seeing that there is a controller model and view folder. So this is an MVC application and we have Razor Views. So I'm gonna open up the index page here, the index view. We'll zoom back out and we can see that we have our Razor markup and we've got a couple lines of HTML and markup here. And two things I wanna point out specifically, we have an HTML helper that is at html.hello and we're passing in the value world. And I also have a tag or a piece of Razor markup that is at this get type base type. So I'm gonna discover what the actual type is that's resolved for this view. So that's gonna be interesting. Uh, first, let's open up our HTML helper and take a look at how that was built. So first of all, we're returning an iHTML content and the method name is going to be hello and we're passing in iHTML helper as an extension method. So that's what the this keyword is for. We're extending the iHTML helper interface with a method called hello and passing in the message ob, uh, parameter. We're gonna write that out into a span, an HTML span, and that gets turned into an HTML string. So this is the basis of an HTML helper, which act as components in a razor view. So let's give this a run. I'm gonna control F5, we don't need a debug. I just wanna see what this looks like on the page. So we're gonna load this up in the browser and our application loads and we have hello world. This is our HTML helper being executed. And we also have that segment where I said at this. So tell me what this thing is and what is the base type? So this is actually the razor view is a razor page of T. So a razor page takes uh, some sort of type. In this case, it's an object. That object is actually your model being passed into the razor view. So interesting stuff there. Let's break out again to a folder view. So what I'm gonna do next is a little crazy. I'm gonna dig into the bin folder for this project. And inside of the bin folder, we're gonna find a project.views.dll file. I'm gonna use a, a free tool called Telerik Just Decompile to open up this Razor view. And let's go ahead and see what was actually compiled from our Razor code here. So I'm gonna dive in. If you see me dismissing a uh, window here, um, this is actually trying to decompile any um, dependencies that are on that object. Don't need all the dependencies decompiled. I just wanna look at the specific Razor view. So inside of this razor view, this is what was compiled from that code that we wrote. And we have uh, our, our class of view home index that inherits from razor page. So that's where the razor page came from of T object. Um, also interesting inside of this is that we automatically generate some properties here. So we have an HTML property. So remember in our code when we wrote at HTML, that's actually where that property is being extended with our extension method. But what's really important is at the very bottom here. So we have a task at the bottom called execute async. And what this does is actually renders the uh, string based on all of the markup that we wrote in our Razor library. So we have write literal and write, and in here you can see our actual HTML helper being executed. All of this stuff gets turned into a literal string, an HTML string that we can view in the browser. So that's very important to know because later on we're gonna talk about uh, Razor components and things are gonna be much different. So let's go back into our presentation and we will talk about um, Razor views, and, or sorry, Razor pages and um, tag helpers next. So Razor pages, was introduced with ASP.NET Core. Um, it's a page focused approach versus model view controller like the previous template. So pages incorporate their own controllers, actions, and routings inside. Um, it's 
in a, it's able to be integrated with MVC, so these things aren't mutually exclusive. Uh, you'll find that's a common trend with all the things I'm talking about today. The content is actually made up of HTML and typically tag helpers. So tag helpers are new to ASP.NET Core. We're going to talk about those next, but we can still use HTML helpers and even Razor components in a Razor page. We'll show that last. If we do file new project and choose web application, we will get a Razor Pages application. This is different from the model view controller application, as we'll see in a minute. If we look at them side by side, the ASP.NET MVC application has controllers, models, and views, where a Razor Pages application has just a Pages folder. And inside of that Pages folder, each page has their own code behind file. So that's how they're primarily different. The Razor page versus a view um, is also written differently. So we have an at page directive. This identifies that this is a page in a Razor pages application. We also have an at model directive that ties into the code behind. So this is where the code behind comes from. This is where the page model is represented. So we can set properties and things. As you see in the example here, we have a message that is used within our markup on the left hand side. Now, also unique to Razor Pages is we have an onGet method. Uh, these methods actually correspond to HTML or HTTP uh, methods. So get, post, put, and delete. So you'll have onGet, onPut, onPost, onDelete, and those things are used in place of controller actions. So the, the page concept is more of a vertical slice, and we're able to do everything in the code behind. So the component model for Razor Pages is actually tag helpers. And tag helpers are asynchronously server-side processed pieces of HTML. These, um, these use tags and attributes, much like HTML does, which helps eliminate context switching between HTML and C Sharp. They're also designed for unit testing in mind. I don't have time to show that today, but it is something that uh, is a benefit of tag helpers over HTML helpers. So HTML helpers versus tag helpers, when you're writing them, there are some fundamental differences between the two. Now, one of the things I like to point out when talking about these two types of component models is HTML helpers are nice. They have nice fluent syntax, but when you go to add things like HTML attributes, such as a class, you have to do some special things. So when we want to add a class, which is a normal thing, a uh, normal operation to do in HTML, uh, we have to do something like this. We have to new up an anonymous object. Then we have to escape the word class because that's a reserved word in C Sharp. So things start getting a little messy when we have to do this. HTML helpers have this problem, tag helpers alleviate this problem by using tags and attributes directly. So this same example below, uh, we're producing the same output, but with very minimal effort. The tag helper portion of this is actually the ASP4 attribute. So that identifies this as a tag helper, and Razor knows how to handle this. And they output the same thing, and what's nice in the second instance here is our class, when we define it, uh, we actually get IntelliSense within Visual Studio, and we don't have to escape it and create those anonymous objects and, and those type of things. Uh, if we look at a more complex example, like a teller at Grid, uh, we have a nice fluent syntax with the HTML helper, but if you look at the tag helper, it looks a lot like HTML, and inside of a big page, uh, this doesn't really stick out, and there's no context to switch between. If we want to control the scope of tag helpers within our Razor pages, we have special directives to bring those things into scope or remove them. So we can use the at add tag helper directive. And there's built in tag helpers in ASP.NET Core. All the things that you need to build a form are there. And if you look at something like the Telerik UI for ASP.NET Core, there are both ASP.NET uh, HTML tag helpers and tag helpers for both um, Sorry, for both Razor tag helpers and Razor HTML helpers. This is a mouthful, guys. Uh, there's about 60 UI components there that support either type of um, type of model. So an example of that would be a date picker. And you can see these are very easy to read and understand. So let's jump into a Razor uh, pages demo, and we'll decompile that one at the end as well. So I'm going to pull my Visual Studio project back up here 
I'm going to switch projects over to Razor Pages. And we're going to dive into the Razor Pages project. And right away, you'll notice I only have a Pages folder. Now, the code for our index page is actually represented in the code behind. And we'll look at the markup as well. So this is the Razor page for our index page. The markup is in this cshtml.cs file behind it, and you can see I have an on get method that's not being used. So we're not actually doing a whole lot of work here, but it is nice to know that it's there. Um, most of this page is written in HTML, and I also have a tag helper on my page here. This is a custom tag helper. So we're gonna talk about custom tag helpers um, for a moment. So let's jump over to custom tag helpers and uh, we'll take a look there and then we'll go back into our demo. Um, oh, sorry, that uh, that actually got removed uh, for time concerns. Um, we're actually going to dive into the code instead of um, some slides here. So in our tag helper, uh, it's a little bit different than writing an HTML helper. So instead of writing at HTML, we're going to target a specific tag. And we do that through HTML target element. This is a directive that we can use to target something inside of our markup. So I have a tag helper called .NET .conf that I'm going to be targeting with this tag helper. And when we build a tag helper, we need to override or inherit the tag helper base class and override the process method. When we do that, we're able to take in content and write it back out as HTML. So we're gonna take in some parameters. Uh, we have a property called name. We're gonna take that in as a parameter and then we're gonna write that out to a string. And that string is going to say uh, property, the, the name property loves.net conf. We're going to ignore some errors here. Visual Studio is not playing her along uh, for .NET Conf. But anyhow, once we're done, we're going to say um, we're going to set that HTML content, and then we're going to render that out to the browser. So we're consuming this custom tag helper here. You can see it's highlighted. Uh, it says .NET Conf. I'm passing in my name, and we're going to render that out to the browser. So we'll control F5. And again, this is the component model for a Razor page. And we're going to write out Ed Charbonneau loves .NET Conf. That's our custom HTML helper. Let's take a look with inspect. And you can see we're writing out a span in that text that was produced by our tag helper gets emitted there. So let's take one more look here. We're going to go back into the folder view. And we're going to find our DLL file again. So we're going to go bin. I'm in debug and we have our project dot uh, razor or project dot views dot dll we're going to decompile that um, i'm going to ignore any dependencies once again i don't need to decompile the entire universe i just want to see the one page that i've written some custom code in uh, let's see what we get here this is the compiled version of that razor page and in that page we have a static class or a public class of pages underscore index. But notice here it's inheriting from page. So a razor view is actually inheriting a razor page. A razor page is just a page. Um, there's some similar properties in here. You'll find HTML is here, so we can still do HTML helpers. And down at the very bottom, once again, we have this asynchronous task called execute async, which turns everything inside of that razor page into a literal string. So again, keep that in mind. That's very important. That is the main takeaway that I want you guys to have today. So we're going to go back and we're going to close just decompile. And next, we're going to start talking about uh, Blazor. So Blazor brings with it Razor components. So Razor components is the component uh, system for the Blazor framework. Now it can still be used in ASP.NET projects, um, which we will see in a moment. But for the most part, keep in mind that the Razor component model came from the Blazor framework. Now Blazor and Razor components use the Razor syntax. They are comp a component architecture versus HTML generation tools. Uh, 
They create what is called a render tree, which is a DOM abstraction. I'm going to show you a little bit of that in just a moment. Their file extension is .razor versus .cshtml. And one of the reasons that we have this distinction is because how different they are in execution. So Razor files are used to gener for code generation and um, these special .NET classes that implement a render tree. So what is a render tree? Well, in a typical JavaScript or jQuery application, we are responsible for writing directly to the DOM. Blazor does that work for us, and it does it through a diffing engine. And the um, an example of this would be in a JavaScript application, we use a selector um, using jQuery in this example. We might find some elements in the DOM, remove them, and replace them. So this is an expensive task for our browser to do. So if we're removing things from the DOM and then scrapping all of that and writing it back, there may be some things that were actually unchanged in this process, but we've gone and removed it and re-added it to the, br the browser anyway. So this is a very efficient model of operation. Blazor does something different. So Blazor creates a DOM abstraction or a shadow DOM. So it has a copy, an object graph, as you, if you will, and it can operate on this object graph uh, much like it would directly in the browser. So if we were remove elements using Blazor, it will do it to the, the render tree first. And then when it adds things back and notices that some elements may not have changed, it only goes to the browser with those changes. So there's a diffing algorithm that runs and says only update the things that have changed in the browser. So this is a system that is very efficient and we don't want to circumvent that. So Blazor has all of these wonderful features. Um, the component model and the render tree are some of the key features that I want to talk about today. So we're going to go into a Blazor application. Um, and first, I just want to mention that with these components, we also have all of these available with Telerik UI for Blazor. So let's jump into a Blazor application and see the difference between the um, views, Razor views, and Razor pages, and now how Razor components um, act within the Razor environment. So I've got in my project here a Razor components project in my solution. And again, you'll notice that we have this pages idea. So we don't have model views and controllers. So this kind of is a um, the next step in Razor pages, but then it does a little more. So we have all of our pages and components inside of this folder here because pages and components in Razor or Blazor are the same. So I'm going to open the index.razor um, file and uh, we'll also open the, the counter Razor file. So these are components with page routes. So these can act like pages. We can call them from a uh, route in our browser, but they also still maintain the ability to be components. So they are both. So if I go back to my index page, I can reuse my counter component. So I can call counter here. And now I have that counter component, which also has a page route, on my index page, as well as it being um, its own uh, counter component and, and page. So I have that reusability there. And the counter component is made up of HTML, Razor Markup in C Sharp. There's no JavaScript here, so we don't have to write JavaScript to build a component architecture for Blazor and Razor components. So let's run this application. We'll see what it looks like, and then we'll do a deep dive again and see what the differences are between what we saw with Razor pages and Razor views earlier. So we've got this nice component architecture. I can use my counter on my index page. I can also navigate to it as a route. So it's acting as both page and component. Let's go back into our application. And one thing I want to point out before I do the deep dive is that our Razor application here, if we go under pages, we have a host CSHTML file. So this is a Razor page that is using, and I'm going to focus on this line here, it's using an HTML helper in a Razor page to render a Razor component. So we've got all three technologies here just mashed up together, and we've, we're awaiting at HTML, uh, render component async, and then we are rendering the, um, the app component, which is the container for our Blazor application. So we're using Razor pages 
and an HTML helper to bootstrap a Blazor application. How interesting is that? Uh, let's go to our source code now. I'm going to go open uh, a folder view, and we're going to go decompile our application again. So I'm going to go under the bin folder. And inside of the bin folder, instead of opening the views folder, I'm going to open the actual application folder because it, the Razor components are not views. So they actually get compiled into the main application DLL. So we're going to open this up with just decompile. And we're going to look at the guts of that counter component. Uh, I'm going to ignore all the uh, dependencies once again. I'm going to dive into Razor components DLL. And under pages, I have counter. We'll open this up. And this is completely different from Razor views and Razor pages. So what the main takeaway here is, we're actually inheriting from a component base architecture. And this counter component becomes a class that uses a method uh, called the build render tree method. And this build render tree method actually is responsible for building that DOM abstraction that I talked about earlier. So it's not writing directly to a string. It's not writing this as HTML anywhere. So when you're writing components for the Blazor framework, you don't want to go in and do manual DOM manipulation. A lot of people, when they start using Blazor, they ask, how do I write raw HTML in Blazor? You can, but you shouldn't. So this is why you shouldn't, because you're going to skip past this build render tree method and you're not going to have that efficiency of the system doing updates for you. So the build render tree actually adds the content to the this uh, object graph uh, through these methods. So we can see add markup, open element, add content, all of those things. And it uses this to keep track of that object graph. So we don't really need to know how all this works in great detail. Just remember it's there so you're not writing things in your application to go in and manually manipulate that DOM. So let's zoom back out here. And I am free to take questions. And hopefully you guys found that interesting. So we got the top level of what all those technologies is, and then we dove into uh, the source code and, and saw what was actually compiled from all of those Razor views. Um, that's probably something you don't do every day, so um, I hope that you guys found it interesting. All right, thanks so much, Ed. I think we have time for one question. One question, okay. quickly. Uh, so a question was asked, how do you avoid the bad patterns of web forms with Razor pages? How do you avoid the bad yeah. patterns of web? That's a, a kind of a broad question. I'm not sure what bad pa patterns we're talking about. Um, but I would assume things like view state, which a view state doesn't exist um, in Blazor the way it does in web forms. So there's no view state for us to manage. Um, what is held in state in the render tree is managed by Blazor, so we don't have any control over that. Uh, so that's not something that we need to worry about. Uh, Web Forms has the idea of uh, an abstraction around state um, that doesn't exist in Blazor. Uh, we handle state in Blazor through dependency injection and plain class objects, um, just like we would in uh, any other type of .NET application. Uh, so that, that concern really isn't. Um, there's no parallel for it to kind of make a comparison. OK, so then uh, quick question. If you are familiar with web forms and you want to dive straight into Razor Pages and Blazor uh, quickly, what would uh, your learning path be? So the learning curve for Blazor, in my opinion, is pretty small because if you're already a .NET developer, it's using all .NET technologies. So I'd say go to blazor.net and click on Get Started and just follow the first uh, few examples there on building uh, your first Blazor application. There's a nice to-do list app in there that you can build. And the component architecture architecture in Blazor is so dead simple that uh, I think people will, will gravitate to this very quickly. All right, awesome. Sweet, thank you so much. Thanks so much, Ed. Thank you, guys. And uh, enjoy the rest of .NET Conf. Thank you so much. Yep, now we're gonna get um, Jeffrey Palermo up, talk about Azure DevOps. So we'll be moving uh, things around. And really quick, we were talking about legacy stuff. Check out this, Visual Basic 4. 
That's as and you can get a workout just lifting this. There you go. Because there's nothing but books. That's right. <laughs> See, it's a box. We still say in the box, in, in the out of box experience. That's right. All right. Chips so we in the will, box. We will all see you guys shortly.